Know that you are not alone. God has given us one another for this journey of faith, to help one another. Know that you do not wait alone, for Christ is with you. Wherever you are experiencing this today, I encourage you to make yourself aware that God is with you. And as we are gathered, let's take a few moments and we'll confess our sins to God, our loving and our forgiving Father. As we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. So Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two readings today. The first reading will be read by Brian. A reading from Genesis chapter 8, beginning at verse 6. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark, 
and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not find anywhere to perch itself because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20. We begin in verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. My Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. I picked two readings today and it's because I couldn't decide which one to read from because I think both of them have an, an uncanny resonance with the situation that we find ourselves in. Because we start with Noah and Noah is on a boat with his family. It's not a cruise ship. It's a boat filled with couples with stocked larders, with plenty of uncertainty and plenty of claustrophobia. Actually, maybe on reflection, that sounds a bit like a cruise ship. Maybe today the seas are rough, or maybe today they're simply tired, but it says that they, they go and they get a dove and they release the dove in the hope that the dove will bring back some evidence of land. And then there's the disciples. And the disciples are in a locked room in a house. And they're there because they are fearful. They are fearful that what happened to Jesus may happen to them. So they lock themselves away. And it, doesn't, it doesn't take a huge leap of imagination to see familiarities with where we are today. Because are we not a bit like Noah? In our own little arcs, our own little boxes, Wondering when on earth this uncomfortable journey is going to end. 
and we don't have doves to watch, but we watch our TV screens hoping for information of when things will ease, praying that there will be an end date so that we may begin that process of rebuilding and finding some sort of new normal with which we can get on with our lives. And are we not a bit like the disciples? Are we not also locked in our rooms for fear of the threat that locks that lurks outside. So what can we take from these stories? Noah. From Noah, I think we take the important idea that this does not last forever. And I'm sure there were moments when Noah and his family and the various unruly beasts were in the ark and they wondered when on earth this is going to end. And as they watched their larders depreciate as quick as their patience, I wondered if they ever felt a little touch of despair. But this did end. And not only did the journey on the ark end, but it ended with a new covenant and it ended with a new period of fruitfulness and plenty. It's important for us to hold on to that. Because I think the truth is, a number of weeks into this a period of cocooning or isolating, and we are starting to feel the weight of that. And we need to remind ourselves that this will not last forever. That this period of time where we are in will end. And we will have the opportunity to rebuild a new reality for ourselves. We need to hold on to the idea that God has plans for us. Has plans for you. Has plans for the church beyond this time that we are in. So let's trust in that, shall we? For out of this difficult time. Let's trust in the idea that God may allow something to grow that is fruitful and plentiful. And what we learn from the disciples? We learn this. The disciples did not need to leave their homes to experience the reality of the resurrected Christ. Because Christ came to them. And that's important. And we need to hear that today. You need to recognise that where you are today, there is no locked door so great that the resurrected Christ may not make himself known to you. And that is the Christ who is greater than our fears and greater than our doubts and much greater than our isolation. God is with you. And God seeks today to offer you his peace. So today, as you sit or stand or whatever you are doing, during this video or after, I'm going to invite you in your prayers to invite the resurrected Christ to stand beside you and to know that he is there. God is with you today where you are. I'm going to invite Carol to read a poem that reminds us that the resurrected Christ of Easter is with us every day. Every day is Easter. When Thomas touched the wounds and set himself free, it was Easter day. When Peter's three yeses to Jesus finished his three denials, it was Easter day. When Mary, ready to embalm the dead, ran in fear from the empty tomb, it was Easter day. When the disciples looked from afar at a breakfast of fish on the beach, it was Easter day. When Emmaus became synonymous with welcome and the breaking of bread with strangers, it was Easter day. When Paul was blinded by the light and recognised the voice niggling in his head. It was Easter day.
When the hungry are fed at the table, the same table as the rich, it is Easter Day. When weapons are beaten to plowshares and peace is a word to be shouted, it is Easter Day. When the stranger is welcomed in community and the lonely are restored to relationship, it is Easter Day. Amen. So let's take um, some time and let's pray together. Um, we'll remember our needs and the needs of our world and our community. We begin with the collect of the day. Almighty Father, you've given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the prayer that we have been praying in time of the coronavirus, the prayer that was written by our Archbishop. Almighty and all-loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we pray to you through Christ the Healer. For those who suffer from the coronavirus and the COVID-19 in Ireland and across the world, we pray for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who has died as a result of contracting this disease. Give wisdom to policymakers, give skill to healthcare professionals and researchers. Give comfort to everyone in distress. And give a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty and distress. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. He showed compassion to the outcast acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. Amen. I'm going to invite some prayers from the community for this time. Dear God, who created all and loves all he has made, please open the eyes of your people that your love might be reflected in our care of the planet. Dear God, Thank you that we have all that we need every day during quarantine. We are so grateful. We know these are very difficult times and, and many people are struggling. Please help them. Dear God, allow us to use our talent and skills in the community to aid people when this is over. Dear God, thank you for the, all the people who are working so hard to keep us healthy and safe. Please protect them as they are doing such important work. Amen. 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 So we take a few moments and we'll be silent and just where you are, on your own or with your family, I'm going to invite you to make your own prayers and bring before God the thing that, that you are passionate about or that you are moved to pray for at this time. So let's do that together. And as we gather up our prayers, we do so in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. As together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I thank you for being part of our online worship experience. It's always of much appreciation to Kevin and all who read and sang and contributed in, in their way to the service. I'm going to encourage people to keep an eye on our Facebook um, network and um, the weekly email and other communications that do go out and encourage people who would like to to find ways of participating either through art or prayers 
or whatever you might like to do. Every Wednesday evening now at 8 o'clock we have a prayer meeting. Um, now we do it on Zoom for those who would like to and you'll get information about how to access that again on our Facebook or in a weekly email. But if, if that's not your thing and you don't want to use Zoom, I would still encourage you every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Why not take 10, 15 minutes and simply stop what you're doing and take a little bit of time to pray. There's lots that we can't do at the moment, but we can pray. So join us for that. Can I leave you today with the words of God's blessing? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you and your home, this day and forevermore.